Hello everybody and welcome to another Twilight Zone review. Today it is Season 3, Episode 11, Still Valley, written by Rod Serling and starring Gary Merrill as Paradine. And I have to say, going into this episode, of all the episodes I've re-watched so far, this was the one I remembered the least about, and after watching it, I find out there's a good reason for that. There's nothing really memorable about this episode at all. It's really not very good. So... We start, interesting enough, where we are back in the Civil War time period, and our main character, Paradine, is there with another soldier, and they're talking some about the war, and this is just basically an introduction to our main character and the way he thinks, and we find out while the other soldier is very reluctant in some ways, that Paradine is really all about his job and his duty, carrying out his uh, mission. So, he's a scout. So he goes down to investigate what is supposed to be a group of soldiers from, you know, the other side of the war, Union soldiers. He's on the Confederate side. And Paradine does see a group of men, but the thing is they are all completely still. They're not moving at all. So, you know, he tries to figure out what's going on. First he thinks they might be sleeping, then he thinks they might be passed away. And it's like watching Elegy all over again where we have... People that are supposed to be completely still, and it just doesn't work. They are uh, moving, and I really wish Twilight Zone wouldn't uh, do this anymore. It just really doesn't work. So that being said, I'll just continue on here. Uh, you know, he's still trying to figure out what's going on. At one point, he shouts out they're all his prisoners, which I thought was funny, because uh, how one man would take all these men back, uh, still or not still, would would be interesting. So he's still, you know, just trying to figure things out when all of a sudden he hears a noise. At first he thinks it might be just the wind, but then we see a hand moving in the window, so we know someone's there. So we go to the next scene, and an elderly gentleman comes out, and we learn that he's the one that did this. He put all the soldiers to sleep. And, you know, he explains he did this with magic. He brings out a magic book and says, you know, I conjured this up. Paradigm says he has no time for magic. So basically the old man shows him how effective it is. He makes it an example of him by doing it to Paradigm. He basically puts him in this state where he can't move, but he can still hear what's going on. So the old man explains, you know, that he knows how to conjure spells and that, you know, these, these Yankees invaded and he didn't like it. So he basically did this. He also explains, uh, that he has the power to do this to the entire army. So he then wakes Paradine back up, and Paradine, you know, who's heard all this, asks him, then why don't you do it? And the old man says, because I'm going to die before the next day starts. So I guess he wouldn't have time to do this. But it's a little unclear on this. I was a little unclear on this because does he have to actually see the people for the spell to work? Couldn't he just conjure the spell and it would have like a worldwide effect. I didn't really get that. It wasn't really explained and I didn't really totally understand that, but whatever. It doesn't make that much difference. I just would have liked some clarification there. So he basically wants Paradigm to carry this out. He wants him, you know, to take the book and do this. And Paradigm's reluctant because he will have to make a deal with the dark arts, you know, the devil, whatever you want to call it. And um, so he does bring the book back to camp. We, we don't know yet what he did or didn't do. And he tells, uh, you know, his leader, lieutenant, I believe it is, the whole story. And at first the lieutenant orders him rest. He doesn't believe him. But then, you know, Paradigm says, I, I, I did. I, I used the book and it worked. I, I froze a whole group of soldiers. So they're still not sure about all this. But then, uh, you know, some soldiers come back. And they say, we don't believe what we saw. You know, all these guys were frozen in place. So they basically know that he did tell the truth and he did do this. And they then want him to use the book because it's their only hope that if you know, you know, Civil War history, the South did did lose it and they're losing. And this is their chance to, you know, rewrite history and to win if they would use this. But ultimately, ultimately it's decided that it's not worth it because they will have to you know, use the dark arts to win, and they will have to renounce good and all this other stuff. So it's like a moral tale with some religious aspects thrown in, but it's just not very compelling or interesting. Maybe if we would have had more of a moral dilemma throughout the whole episode, it seems kind of just shoehorned in at the end so that 
something interesting happens. Most of the episode is set up, and it's just very slow. The opening scene is probably too long, and the scene with the old man, I think, could have been accomplished quicker as well. It's just basically a nothing episode. It's not the worst Twilight Zone, because it's not really offensive or completely awful. It's just... It's below mediocre, though. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. And I give Still Valley a 1.5 1, 1. out of 5. So 1.5 out of 5 for Still Valley. And nothing really to watch here. You can move on. Thanks for watching.